And, uh, you know, I, as, as I became more and more known in the, in the Canadian circle, um, even though I was still, you know, I, I'm, I, as far as bass playing goes, I'm kind of like a, a hacker because I never took any lessons. So everything I learned, I, I kind of put the pieces together, this, which is one of the reasons I don't teach because I don't have any kind of method to show anybody. It's like, but, I, I learn something and I apply it and I learn it and apply it. And so I, I guess that's why my style is unique in certain ways, because I'm also applying stuff from the classical guitar, like the technique of the thing, the picking and all that kind of stuff. So, and tone is really important to me. Very important. You know, coming from a, coming from an acoustic instrument where tone is everything, you have to generate the tone. Sure. So, um, yeah, so this, I just put all the pieces together and um, started to get hired by different, different people. And, and the jazz players kind of like to play with me because they, they, at that time, what they call it? They said, oh, I had a good boogaloo beat. Yeah. You know, because I was coming from Detroit and I was listening to a lot of D D Detroit funk. And yeah. so, so I had that, it, that, that was part of, plus the Jamaican feel also. You know the Caribbean feel, uh, and it was I was getting hired um, by by some jazz musicians, and as it turns out, on one of the gigs, um, there was this gentleman sitting over at, at at a table, and he sat there all night, and he was just kind of watching me all night, and I thought maybe. It was because he saw me looking at his most beautiful wife or something, you know. <laughs> so he came up to me after the gig and he says, um, I need to talk to you. Wow. And, and I went, oh, man, he's going to get pretty big guy, too, you know. So he's going to yeah. kick, my, <laughs> kick my butt right now. Um, he says, uh, my name is David Clayton Thomas from, from Blood, Sweat and Tears, right? And I was a big, I'd been listening to Blood, Sweat and Tears since, since Spinning Wheel, right? Because that was one of the records in our collection in Jamaica. He says, my name is, uh, is David Clayton Thomas, and we have an opening in the band, and I'd like to hire you to play bass. My God, man. So, so Jocko had just left the band, because Jocko had been playing bass with them. Oh, really? Jocko? Yeah, so, the, the yeah, Jocko. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how he hooked up with Bobby Colombi to, yeah. to, to do his solo album. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So he said, uh, are you available? And that was like Friday night or Saturday night. And I said, well, certainly. He said, I'll send a limo to get you on Monday. What about that? That's how I got the gig with Blood, Sweat and Tears. My God, man. So, you know, just, part, of, part of my life is, is luck, just dumb luck. And part of it is just is just like tenacity, just like hanging in there, you know, hanging in there. So that was that was a great band. Mike Stern was in that band. Yeah. Um, Larry Willis was the keyboard player. Oh. Um, Dave Bargeron, who was the who was the band leader for for Jocko's big band. Yeah, the arranger band leader. Uh, big Bill Tillman from Texas. Tony Klatka. Uh, Bobby Economo, the drummer from. Who played on Jocko's album? Those are those are important names, man. Oh man, I felt I felt like I felt so small. I felt like I was standing among giants. Those are big, big names. Man. So, you you mentioned before luck versus tenacity. I, I, I don't know if luck exists or not. You 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 earn it. You, you know, you pay your bills, you pay your dues, and yeah. you got better, and you know, you work hard. The stuff opens up. You know, it's not luck. Luck is when you have nothing to offer, you know. That, Tenacity well, that, pays off. Tenacity pays off over time, I think, you know. Yeah, that's, that's true, but it, it helps to be in the right place at the right time because there's, there's so many great musicians that we'll probably never hear of. Yeah. You know, just because they never got the chance and then they, they were just, you know, now, now everybody wants to be on, on Facebook and they're posting pictures of everything. I, I didn't grow up in that era, you know. Uh, everything, was, everything was a personal relationship. Have you ever played with in the Montreal Jazz Festival? You like Montreal or actually in Quebec too? 
Quebec is a beautiful city, man. I, I love well, going there. Quebec City is, is wonderful. We, we, play, we played there on the Jean-Luc tour. Really? When? Yeah, yeah. In the last tour in 2018? On, on, the, on, the, on the last tour, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful... During the summer, during the winter, it's that so tough, man. Yeah, we actually played in the, in the, in the same hall in, the, in Montreal that we re that we've recorded that video that you see from 1983. Yeah. We actually, we actually played, we did a, a, a show there. It was, it was quite a, quite a, quite a feeling. <laughs> people, people went crazy. Oh man. It, you know, that band, I think, I think the, the, the John Luke's fans are so loyal. Of course. Yeah. They're loyal. They're loyal over the years. So people were, would be bringing like their grandkids to the show. There would be like two, three generations. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, and the kids sometimes would come up to us after and said, we had no idea that jazz could be so fun. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, I took my, I took my son. I, I saw you, you guys did in this area. Uh -huh. you, you did two gigs at the Roundheads in Maryland. Uh -huh. And then you did, you did one gig in uh, on the Vishmer. And I went to Roundhead and I then the night after I went to uh, the Vishmer. That was beautiful, man. That was beautiful. Plus, you had all, all of you know the fire. You had been, you know, in and out of the band, different records, and it, there's a good chemistry. Uh, you guys play well together. It, 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 it you know, it click. You yeah, know, I, I think click in the band. You know, so yeah, that, I think the audience can feel when when things are comfortable, and they can feel when there's a certain like to use. To, for lack of a better word, there's a certain kind of love that's, okay. that's flowing, love and respect that's flowing through the band. They can feel it. It translates to the audience. That's right, yeah. And, and, and it, it will keep them coming back. So, oh man, it was, it was incredible. People would be, would be coming to the, the shows and they were, oh man, I saw you guys back in like 80. And I'm going, really? I drove all the way from, in, from, from, from Philadelphia. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> people, people do, you know, because that, the, the 2018 was, uh, I think it was, if I remember correctly, like 20 nights or something. That it wasn't long. So, it's, you know, it's, he will go to certain cities. And if you are, I don't know, here in the United States, you know, right? If you, if you like a band and you need to drive, you know, two hours or whatever, you, you do it. You know, the tickets are not that expensive. The tickets were like 50 bucks or something like that. And mm -hmm. very affordable here in the United States. And uh, mm -hmm. people will, will drive two and a, three hours or whatever to you know, see, right. see the man, you know. And see you guys, not just jan -Luc, But that was an unbelievable. I hope, I hope jan -Luc never retire. And I, I keep on, you know, keep on doing, you know, Atlantic Year, you know, two now. Because mm -hmm. in the Atlantic Year, there are like 10, 10 records or so. so right. Or oh, there's I, a lot I, more material. Uh, it's a lot more stuff over here. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, I, I, from from your mouth to God's ears, because I, I I'm not over, I'm not done yet. But at the same time, I, I I might get offers from people to go on the road, and I tell them no, I'm not interested. Yeah. Because because I don't I I'm not that involved with the music, and you know I I don't know the people in the band. I I, I guess at my age I'm I'm a, lot, a little bit more picky. You can be picky, right? You can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how was your experience playing with um, John Anderson and when, when there was the Anderson Ponti band? How was, how was the experience? That was awesome. Um, I have been listening to Yes. Actually, I surprised John because I started quoting lyrics from Tales from Topographical Oceans. <laughs> and he looked at me, he says, you know, he looks up, he says, that's quite amazing. You're yeah. from Jamaica, aren't you? How how do you know that album? <laughs> yeah. With that voice, yeah? Yeah. Voice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so I told the man I, I I wore that album out. I wore it out. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So, it, but how how the when you guys toured with, with John Anderson, they were only Pon Ponti guys, you know, you yourself and and Jamie, why John Anderson didn't bring anybody from the Yes days and all the? I'm I'm not entirely sure what their relationship was at that time. Yeah. 
I know that he had been doing some solo stuff. He had been traveling around doing solo stuff, kind of getting getting his his uh, his one man show together, which was pretty amazing. I've seen some videos of it. Yeah. Um, and I think he just wanted to to expand. I think he wanted to grow, and and it, it's it, it goes back to what I was saying before. It, I, it seems to me like yes, kind of got to a point where there wasn't enough growth for him. Yeah. And when he heard Jean Luc's music, it sparked it sparked a, a interest in a different direction. And they started to talk, and that was and that was that. So it's a it's a, a amalgamation of of. John's music and Jean Luc's music, and uh, and it required a certain amount of skill. Well, yeah, because his stuff is very different. You know? it, it, it required, yes, and you had you had to be going between playing Jean Luc stuff and then owner of a lonely heart. You know, so it's a pretty it's a pretty wide range. You know, it's all the way to doing a, a total breakdown where it's just acoustic, acoustic uh, like cajon and acoustic guitar and fretless bass so it 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 requires a lot of a lot of scope actually i was really really impressed with john anderson's solo show i don't know if you ever got a chance to see to see which he, he has done too many that was before the i think a thousand ten thousand cans or whatever no, that that, no that, that's 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 it that's the one yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw I saw him at the Bishmer as well. You know, like uh, I thought that was amazing very, with, the, very, yeah. with, with the with the Chinese uh, uh, violinist and that's right, that's right. Yeah, I thought it was just such an eclectic and the the, the, the percussionist from what's his name, Happy from from Trinidad. Yeah, so it was like the, it was like uh, the, Uni the United Nations on stage, and that's everybody right. was super talented. Yeah, Every no, that, the show that show was very good. I, I, and I had the opportunity to talk to him a couple of the show, and he signed some poster and some CD that I bought. And, and he, he's, of course, he's John Anderson. I mean, I think what's happened in, in jazz, there, there were so many great musicians over the year that there were some, I think, personality issues. And, you know, it's, I don't know, I don't know. And so many good singers there. And, it, it, I, I think it's, you get to a point in a band that if you're good and you want to do your thing and the band doesn't allow you to go into a direction, you need to leave and then, you know, do like, I don't know, maybe a sting with the police, right? You know, mm -hmm. sting wanted to do his stuff different from the police and mm -hmm. he went on his own and look at what he has done, you know? It's, well, I, I, feel, I feel like that, that is the situation in any kind of relationship. You know, you know, in, in in any kind of relationship, because the, the my goal in this life is is to grow and to learn, and from a very early age, I decided that I was going to do something that afforded me to travel, because I wanted to see the world. I want I, this this little island of Jamaica was not big; it was never big enough for me. I wanted to see the world, so first of all, the swimming afforded me travel. Yeah. And, and not only that, but you're meeting, you're meeting people, you're meeting interesting people and interested people, interesting and interested. They're interested in your life. So it's not like, it's not like traveling the world as a tourist where, you know, you're looking for the nearest McDonald's. So it, it, you're, getting, you're getting to try native foods. You're, you're, you're getting to experience the culture of another, of, of another place. Yeah. Look, look, looking back as a, either as a musician or as a swimmer, What's the best place you've ever been, or the place that you could buy a home if you have the money, or move, or whatever? Well, my intention, really, not that it's the best place I've ever been, but my intention is to, you know, I'm getting along in, in age two. I'm probably 10 years older than you are. But my intention is to, is to retire on the big island of Hawaii. Yeah. That would be beautiful, man. That, that's my intention, you know, because right now things, I'm, I'm slowing down, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm still doing stuff in the studio here. I'm mixing and mastering and producing stuff and still learning. I just bought an upright bass because I figured, hey, man, if you're going to play bass, you need to play at the doghouse. So that's right. 
So, <laughs> so I, a few months ago, I went out and, and, and bought an upright bass. So that's keeping me busy. Uh, and I, I would be, I would be content just to have a place and, you know, have a little gig on the island. And I'm not afraid of island life because I grew up. You know, people say, "Well, but don't, wouldn't you feel like uh, isolated to isolate?" I'm saying, "No, not really. Why?" Yeah. But it's expensive, though, for way, man. Ah, uh, the Big Island, not so much. Yeah, the Big Island is not a tourist center, and yeah. plus they have the volcano there. So, <laughs> but there's so many islands. So you you would like the big one instead of the? I love the Big Island. I love the people there. I spent a, a, a couple months there years back. Rented a little house and just stayed. Just just met the people and played tennis with the locals and. And I felt very comfortable. I felt very accepted. You know, immediately they thought I was one of the bros. You know. <laughs> I know. Well, you got you know after the pandemic, you made you move there, open a jazz club, and you know you play every night and you know make a little bit of money to pay the mortgage. Yeah, ex exactly. You know, so who know, who knows? But that's that's kind of my that's like kind of my pipe my pipe dream. But all all in all. My favorite place to travel while we were doing all the tours was Italy. I love Italy. Yeah, from north to south, from 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 uh, Ancona up in the south to 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 Bari, and I mean Ancona in the north to Bari in the south. I have been to every little village. I've been to Sardinia. I've been to, like, I just absolutely love Italy. That's a But, beautiful. Place, man. What yeah. about uh, what about Tokyo? Have you been there? Many times to Tokyo. Of course. I like to visit, but I don't think I'd I'd live there. Yeah. I I, I love the nightlife and 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 the the, the enthusiasm and the, I love the food. Oh my god. Oh, so good, man. Oh, I'm I'm a bit of I'm a bit of a foodie. And speaking of foodies, uh, if if you ever get um, if you ever get the whole band together. I will, no, I, I'm serious. I, I'm talking to uh, Wally couldn't make it this weekend because he's his birthday, actually. Oh, I got to call him. Yeah, either... Thank you for telling me. Yeah, either... He mentioned... It may have been today or yesterday. I don't know. I didn't. Of course, I didn't ask him because I don't know him personally, right? Uh -huh. So he said, no, I cannot do it because... He said, my wife is putting something nice for me together, like I go to get away... Uh, because it's my birthday, I say, man, have, you, don't worry, man. Have a great birthday with your wife, and I will we'll get in touch uh, next week. But then I, I talked to Jamie. I talk, exchange email with Jamie at least once a week, and uh, and then I want to do like a very soon next. So if I talk to Jay, if I talk to Wally next week, like mm -hmm. the week after, I will let you know in advance. You know, can everybody make it at whatever 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. EST, and then. I would think, just look to see, you know, I need to time it well because uh -huh. in France, you are what, six hours ahead, right? And most mm -hmm. of you, the three of you are in California. So I need to, I need to do the math and then synchronize it. But yeah. oh, I, man, I, I, that I, would be fun, man, with Ponti and talking about music. I would, oh. I would enjoy it. It would be a, a gift for me, you know, the, you guys can oh. have fun. Uh, that's, that for me, it's, uh, you know, with all the, you mentioned before, how you put this radio together. So. Uh, with the pandemic, right? I I thought, well, I want to put like a jazz kind of soft rock radio. Uh, I put that first. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of like 50 listeners a week or so. Mm -hmm. Then I say, well, I want to do another another one, a jazz rock, right? That was great. I got you know playing Genesis, uh, Peter Gill, little rock and roll <laughs> stuff. Um, And oh, you, then, you gotta put some gentle giant in there too. Well. I, I have that too. Yeah. And then uh, and I will I will send you on the link so you can listen. Good music for free, man. And then I put I say, well, I want to start doing interviews. I want to interview everybody in, in in the world, man. Uh, because I'm uh, my goals are very high. I'm a very ambitious guy. And I now I have done 50 interviews and uh, I started small and I you know everybody was telling me. Those people, you know, they they're on land radio. You're not the BBC. Nobody will reply to you. And the second week, I interviewed Steve Hackett for Jen, mm -hmm. and I have people like now all the Jaluk, all the Jaluk Ponti band, Jaluk Ponti, uh, the drummer from Toto, 
for uh, Pat Metheny, and now he began doing uh, electronic music people, and uh, it's growing, man. Then after that, I put that an, an, a third radio uh, called Andromeda Sounds, mm -hmm. that uh, I do electronic music, ambient, and then I want to begin doing um, soundtracks too, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm, and I want to begin interviewing directors from different movies, and so I, it's for me, it's, it's, it's fun, man, it's, uh, yeah, it's I'm covering all the costs to put on the radio. I keep on buying music anyway. So, right. and then my idea was I went I want to make it uh, inexpensive for people. So they are all free, twenty four hours a day, no advertising, no social media, nothing. Just the best music I could afford, twenty four hour a day. And I have now uh, uh, close to a thousand listeners a week. That's wonderful. Over. And then some interviews, like the interview with Jean-Luc Ponty, had been seen by 120 people in the world. And, uh, and people help you out, you know? Like when I I send the pictures I took from Jean-Luc, and say, man, this is great, can I use it? Of course you can use it. Right. And then I say, you know, after the interview, Jean-Luc, if you don't mind, you know, here's my name, and here's the link on the radio, and this is the link from the interview, you know, put a little paragraph there, uh, in your website, uh, people begin <laughs> listen to the music, say the great music, and listen to the interview. It was great, you know. People helped you out, you know. Well, you know, there's 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 always interest. If it's if it's somebody you enjoy, there's always interest to to, to find out more about that person and yeah. their life and their motivation. Yeah. And um, congratulations on the show. I, yeah. I hope it grows and grows and grows. I, I want to make it bigger. I want to do another yeah. another radio. It's going to be a jazz. With I'm going to do that actually tonight. Mm -hmm. I need to call uh, you know Pat Metheny Group, right? Yes. Yeah. So I want to call the the drummer Paul Wertico, mm -hmm. uh, who I interview. I'm becoming good friends, uh, and then I, you know, we talk about it. We want to put in a jazz, just pure jazz, just just just. I actually had the pleasure of, of playing with. You remember the first, the first uh, Pat Metheny group with Danny Gottlieb. And, of course, and Danny Gottlieb, of course, yeah. Right. Yeah, so Danny Gottlieb was, was one of the drummers who, who played with Flor and Ayerto at, at one point. Oh my God, man! No, I didn't know. That, that was that was an incredible uh, uh, initiation into into the LA life. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It was he's, he's it was, it was amazing, man. That uh, Manolo Badrino was a percussionist for a while. Yeah. Um, Ugo Fatorusu from from Opa, yeah, from the band Opa. Uh, Maria Fatima was one of the singers. Uh, she was the background singer. Uh, she did a, a lot of stuff with uh, with um, a Brazilian singer. Can't remember his name right now, but it's an incredible, incredible, incredible lineup of musicians, and it always revolved. Uh, Joe Farrell was was played with us at some point. Um, yeah, that was four of the best years in my life. I, I tell people I went to the school of flow and toe. <laughs> right, that's right. And you got paid as well, you know. Got paid. The, fir the first show that we did at, at, at the Roxy in, in, in L.A., in the front row was Stanley Clark. <laughs> wow. Right, right. I mean, I, I was... I don't think I'd ever been that nervous. And to make things worse, the show was opened by Egberto Gismonch and none of us Conceles. Oh, oh man. And then I, I, and then I, I, then I, I, I now, now I know why you were nervous tonight. And then and then I had to go up and play after with all the, and Alfonso Johnson was like way in the back, you know, like looking around the look at looking around the uh, around the curtains. Because it was the the album that we that we were touring behind was a. Uh, Open your eyes, you can fly. I don't remember that album. Yeah, no, no, I don't. I know the top of my head. Yeah. Oh man, go check that out. Well, if you like, if you like fusion, that see that was the heights of fusion. Yeah, I know the name, but I cannot put it in my head. I so need... Alfonso killed on that album, and so I so I had to learn all his lines. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, to start with, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Now, oh man, that's a good story. Yeah. Uh, also, uh. Uh, Jamie told me a story as well that I don't know what when it was, but I don't know if you were playing with 
which I looked at. He got very nervous one night because they were, um, the story goes something like this, that they were playing whatever, in Madrid, Spain. It doesn't make a difference where the city was. And, and the, before there were an, an, an opening band with different musicians, mm -hmm. they played, you know, before Jan Luc, uh, it was like a festival, right? It was a festival, they were, they were different bands. And he got very nervous and he said, Jan Luc, I, man, I, I, I think I'm, I'm quitting, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving tonight. What, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean I leave? No, 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 you see the, all the, the people that are playing behind, behind us and being before and they're heroes of mine. And I don't wanna, you know, embarrass myself. I have great respect for those people. And I said, what are you talking about? And Jalo uh, Ponti said, you know, sit down, man. You know, I respect you a lot as a musician and you are my, my guitar player. You have an idea how many people want to be in your spot? <laughs> and he said, yeah, many. Yeah, well, I, I pick you, man. So <laughs> yeah, get a glass of water, go to the bathroom, relax, man. You, you are my man. You are my musician. And it went like that. So. I know exactly how he felt because there was a there was one show that we did. Um, I think it was in Philadelphia on that first tour, that early tour. Because for some reason, um, I don't know if it, we had similar booking agents or something, but Jocko's band and our band always seemed to be either in the same place or so. The word of mouth small band opened up for us. Yeah. Oh man. What do you play after that? You right, you can top that, right? Yeah, right. And you know, plus I've been I've been stealing a lot of Jocko licks and whatever. So now I can't play any of that stuff <laughs> because Jocko was there. The real, yeah. the real stuff is there. So uh, that was that was an interesting event. So I I know exactly how Jamie felt. I was I was ready to like call it quits and just go home and just like all right, you know. Yeah, so Jamie would say, no, I'm leaving. No, 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 you cannot leave, man. I pick you. And I could have chosen many, many guitar players, but you are, yeah, man. And, 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 and also, Jack, Jamie told me that Jamie and, and Jan Luke have like a son-father relationship. I don't know. They, they, you know, they, I don't know. That's what he, he mentioned that he. Yeah, it, well, it's pretty much like the, the, Jamie and I have a, like a brother. A, I feel like a big brother to him you because, know? you know, He's, he's, he's a special, he has a really special spirit. Yeah, plus he like all the animals that he got. Right. Yeah, might, a, I say, might, I say, might I say he has a delicate spirit. Yeah, he's a good, good decent person, man. Right, and he's, 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 like, he's like a wide open book all the time. Yeah, so, sometimes, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not good, man. Sometimes it's good, but sometimes people would take, people take, would advantage? take advantage of it. Yeah. So, so I was, I always felt like I was his protector. I got you. Yeah. You know, I know what you mean, man. How was the experience with uh, San, with Santana, Carlos Santana? Oh, that was awesome, man. The guy is he's the man, man. That was uh, well. I mean, Santana is great, but let's talk about the band. Okay. Well, yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course. Okay. I'm all ears, I mean, man. Seriously, let's talk about the band. The first tour that we did in Japan. To Japan, and um, when was that? Which, what year was that? So they put it in the context. Uh, uh, oh, let me let me put that in. Uh, 1986. Gotcha. Yeah, that's 1986. when I came to the United States. Yeah, 1986. Check out this band, Chester Thompson. Oh man, I know who he is on keyboard. Also, Tom Coster on keyboard. Chester Thompson wasn't playing drums. No, no, not that Chester Thompson. Chester Thompson, the keyboard player from Tower of Power. Ah, I got you. Okay, I, I heard Chester. Yeah, the, 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 the keyboard player. Okay. Not just one, but two keyboard players. Chester Thompson and Tom Coster. Of course. I know who we Tom. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to go through the lineup here. Uh, Graham Lear. Yeah. Right? From, 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 he was from Canada. I'd, I'd known him from Canada because he, he had also done stuff with... Uh, with um, Gino Vanelli and I would go see I go see them play with Gino, but awesome drummer. Um, uh, Raul Rico, Kungas, yeah. Orestes Villatao, Timbales, yeah. And Armando Peraza, yeah. Wow, man. And and there were. There were I went to a couple of incarnations of the band, and I think at that time it was Greg Walker singing. 
Yeah. Wow. Okay. It doesn't get any better than that. Of course not. When 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 we start playing like jingle, <laughs> jingle went crazy, and that and that percussion section locks. Yeah. You could you could feel the smoke like coming off the stage, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and the people, so, the Japanese people, went crazy. Well, the, the, the Japanese people are a little bit more reserved. Yeah, they're more reserved. But you know, how can you? Well, the Europeans no, went crazy. The Europeans went crazy. You know. Uh, oh, awesome! Just incredible. So, so that was the first band, and also Sadal Watanabe sat in with us. The great Sadal Watanabe on saxophone. Yeah, that was at the Budokan Theater. Uh, that was that was my first. Actually, I just found on the web. I just found a recording of that very first show. I, wow. fo I found it. I found it on on YouTube. How does it feel to to be? Sometimes you look at videos on YouTube and you say, "Well, I was there," and the people commenting, you know, "That was a great show. That was a great show." Uh, it, I mean, there's 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 nothing that can really compare. It. The videos have been popping up with shows because I'm I'm not I'm not one to take videos and pictures and whatnot. I'm, I I tend to be more of a private person, but all these videos are popping up and people are sending me, "Oh, here's the show you did with the." With the Crusaders and, and and Randy Crawford, you know, from from France, and I'm going, that was recorded. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a double. It's kind of a double, it's a, a double excitement. So I'm excited that it was recorded and that it was, uh, it's there for posterity. But yeah. I'm also thinking, I never got paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some some musician, you know, they they. Of course, they have all the legal right to, um, you know, complain against you too, and you, uh, you too, you, you know, bring it down. Other other musicians see it as a free advertising. And oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not talking about the YouTube presentation. I'm talking about the actual, oh, the, it was the, the actual recording itself that was done for a TV show or something. That, huh. but the but the management they would never inform you. Right, you just oh. get your you just get your weekly pay. You're really supposed to get extra. Of course, yeah. But, but none of that was ever discussed with us in in those days. So I'm seeing oh, all these. Uh, I know, I, I know. You I'm mean seeing that. all oh, these yeah. videos now, and I'm going, really? That was a TV show. Hmm. Yeah, where's where's my percentage? Yeah. Where, yeah. Where's my? <laughs> yeah. So, see my, yeah. But at that time, you know, it, it didn't really matter. It was all about you know we were young and. And it was about the excitement of being on the road and playing for all these people, and I'm playing with all these. I've been really blessed with the, just the, just the people that I've been able to share this thing with. Well, you can't play with.